Here is your host, flight instructor and aviation safety specialist, TC Freeman. Hello pilots, wanted to talk today about uh, an airplane. It's one of my favorite and I got checked out in it some years ago. Uh, the moral of the story, which we'll jump ahead to, is uh, not all aircraft are created equal. You know, we all get to that point where we want to get checked out in a different type of aircraft. And you think, oh, it's just a single engine airplane, should be no big deal. Uh, my favorite aircraft, or one of them, I have many, uh, is the Piper Dakota. And the reason I like the Piper Dakota is it is actually a legitimate four-place aircraft with full fuel. So you can, um, in most models, of course it's going to be a little different depending on which model, but you can put four 200 pound folks in the aircraft and then put full fuel and you're still within uh, weight and balance uh, limitations, which is very cool. Uh, you know, most aircraft I've been flying up to that point were uh, maybe four seaters, but I call them, in practical terms, it was more three seat aircraft. Uh, the other seat was there pretty much as a decoration of sorts and not really functional, as they say. Uh, but I did go and get a check out, got with a flight instructor because I'd been uh, working with a pilot for his uh, instrument rating and I wanted to get to the point where I could get uh, checked out legitimately uh, with the flying club that owned the aircraft and they encouraged me to do that. Um, so we went out and, and uh, flew the airplane and, and this aircraft was a little different. It had been modified. It actually had a direct connection uh, a modification like a rod that went to the nose gear. So instead of like a cable and spring kind of deal or a free castering nose wheel, it was a uh, direct connect. So when you push the right rudder pedal, it actually pushed a rod that turned the nose gear. This direct connect system that they had actually worked really well on the ground because you felt like you had a real good firm uh, control of the aircraft on the ground. However, when you got in flight, you can kind of imagine, maybe you know where I'm going with this story, is say you're coming in on a landing for a landing and you have a right crosswind. So there are crosswinds coming this way. Well, you're bearing down to the right, but what are you doing with the rudder pedal? Well, you're kicking left rudder if you have a right crosswind to keep that what I call the armrest axis, the longitudinal axis aligned with the center line. Otherwise, you're coming in crooked and you're going to have an issue there on landing. If you think about back to the direct connect uh, system that they had with the nose gear, well, if you're coming in on that landing, you have the right wing down, the left rudder in. Well, what does that do to the, no to the nose gear? Well, it kicks it off to the left. You probably see where I'm going with this. That's an issue when you want to land because what's the aircraft going to want to do? It's going to want to dart to the left. Uh, the flight instructor told me, he goes, hey, uh, because of that system, you might want to neutralize the rudder pedals once the nose gear comes down. So you can land on the mains, hold it off, and then nose gear comes down and you neutralize. And that way you can maintain positive control from that point. That was a good tip. <laughs> so just one of those kind of unique uh, design characteristics with this particular aircraft that, that pilots need to be aware of.